Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back. My name is Moran and this is my channel where I share my crochet object knitting journey and all my creative adventures. Today is Tuesday, April 16th and I have quite a few things to catch up with you today. But first thing that I wanted to start this episode with is just to say a huge thank you to all of you who sent lovely, lovely messages and prayers for us on Sunday morning. Um, yeah, uh, between Saturday and Sunday, on the night between Saturday and Sunday, we got the information about um, an attack from Iran and we that is coming towards Israel. We didn't really know what to expect, but uh, they've been told all the people in Israel to be aware of that and to stay very close to shelters. So Maya, the, our eldest, that she lives in Tel Aviv, her and all her roommates, everybody went to their parents' houses and to stay together. Uh, so yeah, we had quite a tough night between Saturday to Sunday and when we woke up on Sunday, we, I had a flood of messages from you telling us that you think about us, that you pray for us, and I, we were very thankful for you and grateful for each and every one of your messages and your prayers. Uh, yeah, it's we are having quite a complicated days here in Israel. Now we don't know what to expect in, if Israel will do something, you know, react. I don't know. Uh, it's really, it's really tough. Um, yeah, but anyways, thank you for all of your messages, for all of your prayers. It really, it means so much to us. Um, yeah, we just came back from Holland uh, last week. Yeah, last week. Um, we were in a very much needed getaway, Ayal and myself. And on the last few days, I've been busy editing a lovely I think a lovely video for you so if you would like to to enjoy a video where I share everything that we did in this little getaway we spent some time with our friend Masha in a very small village uh, in more in the center I think of Holland um, the name of the village is Bamel and Masha is a very um, good friend of us for years and years and she kindly offered us to come and spend some time and to relax in their place and it was such a lovely stay. So we spent the first part of the trip, the first part of the visit with, mostly with her and a little bit with Andy, her husband, and a little bit with their uh, eldest Lisa. And we had a car, so we could um, make some, you know, star trips from, you know, it was like a, an hour or an hour and a half drive from many places. And we made some hikes and nature hikes and morning walks, you know, around her village. And then on the last trip, on the second uh, part of the trip, we visited Amsterdam. Uh, yeah, we all in all we had a lovely stay. I managed to visit four yarn shops in this trip. Two yarn shops, really at the first, at the beginning of the stay with um, in Ut. In the first day, we stayed with Masha when we visited Utrecht, and two in Amsterdam. And all of them are shared in the video that I edit of our visit to Holland, our little getaway to Holland. So yeah, if you would like to get a notification when, I, I'm not sure when I will upload it, I hope I will upload it later this week, just before, I aim to upload it before Pesach, before Passover, before I'm getting too busy. Uh, so. I think if you do, would like to get a notification when when it is available here on my channel, uh, you can click, you can get subscribed to my channel and click on the little bell icon right next to the subscription uh, button. Uh, click this bell button and you will get a notification when 
a new video is uploaded to my channel. So yeah, I have for today, I have a few works in progress to share with you. And I also want to show you the yarn that I purchased in our Holland getaway. Uh, and I also have a very special and pretty uh, something that arrived in the mail while we were away that I will share with you at the end of this episode. I'm having just a little bit of coffee left for me for the day uh, so I'll have it with you uh, and I hope you also have something nice to drink and while I chat and share my creative adventures with you. I'm wearing my Nook sweater and I shared, I shared all the details about this uh, lovely Raglan t-shirt here on my channel in the past so I will not repeat it but I will just tell you that I knitted it using holding two strands of yarn Ito Shimo and Ito Sansai and I really really love this t-shirt I um, wear it today with nothing underneath it's starting to get warm here in Israel it is usually like this uh, you know as, as Passover is coming, so it's already spring, but you can feel it's getting warmer. So I just wanted to make the most up out of the last days that I can wear, you know, woolly knits. Although it's a short sleeve t-shirt, it is still a woolly knit, a woolly layer, so I want to enjoy it as much as I can. So yeah, I think we can start with uh, what I was first busy with knit, uh, making as I as we were traveling. So the first thing that I made is uh, finishing my, uh, make, crocheting my soft rose squares. And I took with me two balls of, of the yarn that I'm using. I'm using the Merino by Knitting for Olive. I shared it many times here in the past with you. Uh, and I just made, I think I made 12 more squares as I, I was making, I was crocheting it um, the whole first part of our uh, trip. So, and then I was, I knew that I will only need 12 more soft rose squares uh, and then I will be ready to join. So I really wanted to be able to be ready for the joining as when we come back home. Uh, and yeah, I follow my soft rose square tutorial that is shared here on YouTube. I will link it down below in the description box for you. Uh, and then I, after I finished, you know, crocheting the last 12 squares because I want to make a summit row, which is 12 squares by 10 squares, um, and according to the yarn I have left, I knew I can only make 10 rows. So as I finished crocheting the last 12 squares and I weave, weave in all the yarn ends in our car while on the road, uh, which is something that I really love to do. I really love it when Eyal is driving and I am busy knitting or, cro or crochet listening to music, having some, you know, coffee in the car. I really, really love it. It was such a lovely time. Uh, and I weave in all the yarn ends while Eyal was driving. And then when I came home, I started to join the squares and I started to, you know, make, make it a summer throw. So, let me show you how it looks. I already, I think I already joined, I think six rows. Let me show you how it looks. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six rows already joined and I joined all the horizontal uh, lines so I have 12 squares in each row to this direction 
and I will have 10 squares in each row to this direction. And this is how it looks now. I am really, really in love with the way it comes up. Uh, it comes out and I'm using the front slip stitch joining method. I'm, I follow the tutorial I have here on my YouTube channel, so I will link it for you. And this is how it looks. Let me show it to you from up close. I really, really love this joining method and I love the way the, the corners where I made the popcorn stitches, I love the way it meets. The, 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 I love the point or the section of the meeting point. Yeah. I, I'm really looking forward to see how will this uh, throw will come out and after so I have I, I already prepared all the all the squares that I have and uh, organized them in piles of 12 squares and I have four more rows to join for you know in the vertical direction and then I will join the horizontal uh, direction all the horizontal lines as you can see they are still open here um, yeah I think I shared all the details I used the three millimeter crochet hook and this is the same hook that I use for the joining I still have quite a few squares uh, with this framing that I um, I showed you a few episodes ago that on a few squares I crocheted this decorative kind of round around the third round of the square but eventually I decided that for now I don't want to have this extra decoration on my summit row I really want to keep my soft rows summit row as minimalistic as I can and monochrome you know this is for now I can always you know edit later after joining and after framing my blanket if I feel it needed it's needed I will edit later but for now I just want to you know rip these these ones back get them plain again and then join them so I have four piles here waiting for me and one pile is waiting to be joined and one pile that I want to rip out all of those decorative uh, rounds and then join them. I still have two of these left. I don't know if you remember, I also tried these kind of squares, so I thought maybe to incorporate a few of these in, this, in the throw, but eventually I will not uh, incorporate them. So I will also uh, rip these out and I will use the yarn for the joining. I already measured and I all, only need about one gram and a half for joining the 12, the horizontal line which is joining 12 couple of squares. And yeah, and I use the flat, the, the front slip stitch joining method and as I shared in my previous episode, um, I thought of maybe to sew them, to use the, the sewing join, but after having some, you know, breakages in my basic granny square blanket, I decided to not to do it this time and to use the flat. I also think it's much more suitable for, you know, this style of, of blanket. And I really like the way it looks. So yeah, this is it for this. Uh, crochet blanket this work in progress next I just want to share my um, the progress I made on my coziest memory blanket so last time I shared it I almost finished row 11 and for now I 
finished it and already started working on row number 12. And finally, I am the last person on earth, I think, that received the package, the March package. I think it was March. I will tell you in a minute from the row one subscription. So let me show you row number 11. This was row number 11. And when the row one subscription arrived, I immediately started to use it. And these are, I think, yeah, all of these are from this month of the row one subscription, not this month, the, the last month. And these, and this one is also from the row one package, new package that I received when we came back. I will show it to you in a second. And this is the second square on the 12th round, which I just made, knitted this morning with my morning coffee. So let me show you this month package. First, let's make sure what month was it. Uh, because every month you receive uh, your package with uh, an information regarding the yarn dyer. It's each month you receive um, 10, 10 minis of 10 grams of a hand wool, uh, hand dyed wool. So this month is the Carnival Colors Row I'm bring you 100 grams of hairy socks from Pearls Postulates. Pearls and, Pearls and Postulates. Which month was it? I'm not sure. It's not written. Anyways, I'm the last one to receive this package. And this month was awesome. It was so, so pretty. I really, really love the colors. And let me show them to you. I already mixed some other colors in it. But this was the package. The last package that I received from row one. And this might be... The most beautiful package I received you know it, it was most of you know my taste and the other knitters here in my weekly clubs that are all also subscribed to the row one subscription said this say the same it's it was the most the prettiest packages uh, that we received by now and therefore each each yarn that I finished to knit with, I immediately placed the yarn label back on the, on the yarn, just in case I want to, you know, order a full skein. But I really, really love all of them, or most of them. This one fell apart, so I have it here in the, in the bag. Anyway, this was uh, the, this was something that also arrived one day after we came back from Holland, and I immediately started to use use it and knit with it and add more squares to my coziest memory blanket. Still a project that I really really enjoy to work on. This on this row I plan to add another stripey, kind of black and white stripey uh, square that I try to incorporate here and there in my blanket. But this is how it looks now. I'm still very in love with this project, very happy to work on it. Um, yeah, and I missed it when we were away. So this is the second work in progress that I wanted to share with you. What's the next one? Let's see. I think the next one, maybe it's the last one. Let's see how long it takes me. The second project that I uh, was busy making in our Holland adventure uh, was a pair of socks, which I usually travel with a pair of socks. So before we went, I didn't really know what I will take with me. I was a little in a rush because I wanted to upload the sourdough 
uh, video here to my channel and then I also wanted to share an episode, a regular episode before I go. And I was, it, it was a little bit, I was a little bit under pressure. I also had the two weekly groups here and I wanted to make some food for the boys be before we leave and you know, all the regular stuff that, the usual stuff before traveling. So I didn't really have, you know, the quiet moment with myself uh, to try and think of what I will take, but I knew for sure I will take some, you know, some yarn to knit, to knit a pair of, to knit socks. It's, it's a very portable project, very easy to, to carry and very small that I can, you know, tuck in the bag whenever, wherever I go. And I also knew I will probably take uh, some yarn to uh, complete my soft rose squares. So this is what I did. So after I finished crocheting all the soft row squares, I started to knit a pair of socks and I cast it on and I, I had another pair in my mind which I made when we were visiting the Austrian Alps. And this is a pair of shorties that I knitted on our uh, trip to the Austrian Alps. And when I came back and I was, I shared it on a reel on my Instagram, um, on Instagram. Uh, and the girls here, the knitters here said, can you, you know, send us a little note? And uh, we also want to knit it. Uh, many of them knitted it. So I wrote the pattern down really, really quick, like a sketch pattern for them and um, a few of them knitted it as well. But after we finished, we knitted it and blocked it and started to wear it, we all agreed that it is a little bit too short. And I felt I want to have them just a little bit, a little bit uh, longer. So I thought I will grab some minis and mm, you know, the ones that I think from the row one subscription that I think will not go into my coziest memory blanket uh, and some that I received as a gift from a follower here, Yael from Sweden. And I, you know, just tuck them into this lovely, lovely project bag that I will tell you about in a minute. Uh, put, you know, all the needles that I knew I would like to work with. In This is my uh, sock knitting case, needle case. And I said I will try to, you know, knit a new pair, a new version of these shorties. And I have the cuff already knitted. And I have it on the needle already. I had it here for... I don't know, weeks and weeks waiting for me. And this is also out of a mini from the row one. This dark, deep, dark forest green, which is gorgeous. I think it's gorgeous. So I took it with me and when I finished making all my soft row squares, I went on this project and started to knit a pair of socks and I knew I want to keep the same you know color work as in this sock but I didn't re and I knew I want to have it a little bit longer but I didn't have any color story plan so I just took out yarns from from the project bag and started to knit. So let me just give you a little bit of information because I know you will, you might ask. So on the cuff, I used a two millimeter needle. I cast on 60 stitches. I had 60 stitches cuff made on a two uh, millimeter needle and the cuff that was already made was knitted a knit one pearl one, but the knit one two back loop. So you can see this tidy, tidy look of rib instruction, one by one rib. And then I changed to a 2.75 millimeter 
uh, needle. I made it all on a short circular needle, on sh sh nine inch short circulars. I will show it to you. This is the needle I use. All the needles I use and a lot of other goodies are linked down in my Amazon storefront. All of them are affiliate links if you like to check them out. And I changed to a 2.5, a 2.75 millimeter uh, needle for the color work. And I learned this trick from Summer, from Summerlin Knits, when she said it is better when you work um, a color work and you know, the, um, the knit starts to get tighter. It is better to change. She said she changed to 2.75 millimeter needle and I also have a 2.75 here so I changed and I started to knit knit one from the from one color and knit one from the next color and after a few rounds I changed to this color and then I started to knit the heel flap on my Holland video Holland adventure video I share uh, you know, it's kind of like, not really a vlog, but there are a few of vlogging bits um, edited into the video and I shared uh, how I make the heel flap. Uh, I was knitting it in a cafe and yeah, so it's shared there. So I made the, my go-to heel flap and heel turn, the slip stitch heel flap. And then I knitted the, the foot. And then just before starting the toe, I, once again, I changed and yet the feet section I knitted on a 2.25 millimeter, which is my go-to needle for socks knitting. And then I changed again to 2.75 for the color work. Once again, I played with the yarns and then I knitted the toe. The toe section I changed again to 2.25 millimeter. Yeah, it was quite an adventure, you know, changing the needles, but I think it worth the effort. So I was very happy. Uh, in the morning when we were about to go back home, I finished the toe and the kitchener stitch. Uh, we had a lovely, lovely hotel room in Amsterdam. Uh, we had a very lovely uh, recommendation. Ona from the Monday's Girls, Monday's Knitters, she recommended us this uh, hotel, which was a perfect fit for us. It wasn't in the center. We are not center city kind of people, not the center of Amsterdam. So it was a perfect match. And we were in love with our hotel room. So I woke up a little bit early to enjoy the view from our window it was a lovely view for the canal with the bloom, a pink bloom and you know, the Amsterdam architecture. And then I was, uh, spending some time in bed, finishing up the toe and the kitchener stitch. So when we went on the airplane, I said, okay, I will start to knit the next sock for this. And I already knew I don't want to have the same yarn, comp the same color composition, the same color story. I just want to have the next sock or maybe the next few socks in like, you know, color, a combination of color story. How should I say it? Like, I wanted them to be like lovers or, or neighbors and not, not really twins. I didn't want to have the same, exact same sock. Uh, I think this came to me when I was, you know, placing all the yarns in my project bag and uh, I just wanted to have a few different socks. And also because I don't have a lot of yarn, you know, I don't have a lot of yarn, for example, from this green color, so I cannot make the same sock, but I also don't want to make the same, the same uh, sock, exact sock. 
And let me stop here just for a second and share my project bag. This is a new project bag that I received right before leaving from Yael, a lovely knitter from the Knit Night Club. I think I already told you she is making her first baby steps on project bags making and she just made this lovely one for me and I took it with me to Holland. I already share, I also share it on my uh, Holland adventure video, which will be available on my channel soon. So I was very inspired by everything that is going on inside this bag. And I said, when we went on the airplane back home, I started to knit the second calf using another mini from the row one that I knew will not go into my coziest memory blanket. But as I was knitting it, I thought, mm, I'm not sure. I might change my mind after editing this video, but I'm not sure about this one. And as soon after I thought, I'm not sure about this color, I started a new cuff. So this is the next one I started to knit. And I'm not sure about this one either. So I'm just about to, you know, I was just about to rip out all the color work because I think the cuff may, might go uh, well with this, with this sock, with this color story, but I, I'm really not sure about it, but I really don't like the pinkish color here. So two options, I might rip it all back or I might leave it on the needle and just start a new cuff and a new leg and decide as I go because I would love to have a few of like mix and match kind of shorties like this um, and for the main you know main color I thought to use this one because I think it goes very very well together So yeah, I don't know how to, I don't know if I will continue working on it. I might like it better while editing. You know, sometimes when you look at things from the eyes of the camera, you see them differently. So I might fall in love with it while editing, but as for now, they don't look like siblings to me or neighbors or lovers. So it goes right into the bag and maybe yeah, these are also colors that I thought to use, but we shall see. I will maybe um, have another trial on this one. So this was uh, my sock traveling project. Um, and I have a new sock cast on, just a short update because, and this update is for my local followers, for my local viewers. I received a lot of requests if I have um, a tutorial in Hebrew for sock knitting and I thought it will be a good idea to maybe to try and create um, full pattern for plain vanilla socks. So I'm just on the first steps of this making. It's, it's a huge project to create, but I cast on the new, a new cuff just for this purpose. And I use a yarn that I was gifted from the lovely people from Yarn in Zichon, the same yarn shop that I visited um, here in Israel, I shared it on previous episodes. Uh, and this is a Madeleine Tosh. I might have the label here as well. No, I don't. 
This is a Madeleine Tosh sock wool and I cast on a new sock on a 2.25 millimeter needle, Chiago Shorties, same needle as I use uh, usually on sock knitting. I cast on 60 stitches and started to knit a rib 2x2, two two, so knit 2 and purl 2. And here I have 22 rounds made. Yeah, and I hope to, you know, on the second sock, I divided the wool, as always, I divided the wool to two, so I have 50 grams here and 50 grams here, and I will work the socks parallelly, as I always like to do, on, usually like to do on socks, when they are matching socks. Um, and yeah, and I plan to, you know, sit and record uh, a Hebrew tutorial for my uh, local meters. Yeah, I think next is, uh, yeah, I want to share all the wool that I purchased on our Holland getaway. So as I told you, on our first part, on the first part of our Holland adventure. We were staying with Masha, our friend, uh, and we went, every day we went for a trip outside. So on the first day after we, we arrived on, I think, Tuesday night, we arrived, it was quite late. We had a little bit of delay in the flight. We took the car and it took us about an hour to drive from Schiphol Airport to Masha's uh, village, to Vamel. And when we arrived, we had a little, you know, a short tea together. And then we went up to our room, unpacked and um, went to sleep. And then the next day we, wake, we woke up, we, just, you know, explored a little bit Masha's garden. Masha had to go to her work. Uh, so we were alone uh, and we went to explore a little bit the garden. We've been there already a few years ago, but she told us there are a lot of new things in the garden. She, um, they bought a sauna and built a sauna in the garden and they had um, a new chicken coop. And yeah, so we went to explore and then the for it, it was raining and the forecast told us that it will be raining until noon time. Uh, so we were, we, you know, what, weren't in a rush to anywhere. We enjoyed ourselves, you know, exploring the garden. And then we went to the car and we drove to Utrecht, which is, uh, again, about an hour drive from Vamel, from where Masha live. And we had a perfect, perfect day in Utrecht. I share a lot uh, of this visit in the Holland Adventure video that I plan to upload later this week. Uh, and in Utrecht, I visited two yarn shops. The first shop that I visited called Modileine, Modileine. I share a lot of footage from, this, from all the shops in uh, the video that I uh, make from Hol the Holland Adventure video. But I purchased there mainly industrial printed sock wool. Yeah, so all of these, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these are sock wool that I purchased in the first uh, shop. And these are from two different brands, which I didn't know until then. So the first is Bella Merino Extra Fine. Yeah, it's a 100 gram skein with a ball of yarn with 420 meters. Lana Grossa. And it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. So this is the first type of wool. So these are four colors, gorgeous colors. Can't wait to use them. And from the other brand, which is Meilen Weight Arte 
with aloe vera. So you also have aloe vera in the yarn. 80% virgin wool, 20% polyamide, 100 grams, 420 meters. So the same. And this is the colors that I chose from this brand. And I love the colors. Really, really love them. And the knitters here uh, yesterday from the Monday's Club, we already uh, already said, when can we use them? But I said, let me just share them in my uh, next podcast before we start to use them. I guess all of us will use them in our coziest memory blankets and, and maybe for some socks. Yeah, we are all into scrappy socks projects now. Yeah, so this was what I purchased in the first uh, shop it was in Utrecht and then in Utrecht I also visited another shop do I have the name of the shop here yeah sticks and cups was the name of the second shop in Utrecht and there I I also I have a lot of footage that I took from there uh, in the in the um, Holland adventure video uh, but they had I think mainly Lana yarn, Lana, I think, yeah. So there I purchased, so let me show you. First, I purchased quite a few of the Lana sock wool that you can see here. Let me grab it for you. So, yeah, I already organized it here in my studio. I was so, so excited. It's, sorry, it's Lang. It's the Lang uh, company, not Lana. Lang. And the Sticks and Cups shop had an enormous collection of Lang. So it was quite interesting for me to stay there. And fortunately, Ayal is very easy with this you know, times when I find uh, a wool shop, he always find a place to sit, have a cup of coffee. In this case, he just found a lovely shop that Maya, our eldest, loves. So he was texting her and, you know, taking pictures and asking her if she wants something that we will, uh, you know, bring for, back from this shop for her. So I, I had quite a lot of time to explore. They had a really lovely collection of lung yarns, all kind of different materials and yarn compositions. And I came back with a few, I think all of these were already here I had, and all of these were the ones that I purchased in this shop. So now I have quite a collection of this lung wool. And this is already found a home in my studio and I am completely in love. So I purchased these ones and then I purchased three of these, which is the Rauma Garn Finnel. I heard about it quite a lot from other podcasters, other knitters, podcasters here on YouTube, and I really was curious to try it. I think for me, it might be too rustic for a garment, but I do have some, you know, big ideas in my mind for future development, so I might uh, go ahead and and work with this uh, for, you know, maybe hold it together with other yarn uh, for a future bag pro developing um, project. And what else I purchased in this shop? It was very, very interesting. I shared all the colors and all the wool, but uh, from this type of wool, um, the lady, lovely lady there told me that the owner of the stick and cups shops shop she also dye her own um, hand dyed wool she also sell her own hand dyed wool that she dyes herself so i took this one back with me this is the name of her brand 
Let's see, it's Mina Dye Works. Never heard of it before, but I was really, really excited with the colors. And now I have to be honest, I said, okay, I'm going to Amsterdam, I'm going to Stefan and Penelope, and also another wool that I another wool shop that I plan to visit in Amsterdam. So I will not take too much here. And this was a mistake because her colors were absolutely beautiful. You will see it on my uh, Holland adventure video. They were stunning. They were like really with my name on them. And they had a really reasonable price. It's $24.95 per skein. Um, and I chose this plum rose a color it's a sock wool 100 grams per skein 425 meters 80 percent merino and 20 percent polyamide again a sock wool fingering sock wool and it will for sure be joining uh, all the knitters here want to join this beautiful color into their coziest memory blankets and i might use it also for sock soaks in the future anyways i really regret that i didn't to didn't take more of her colors but i was very excited to at least that i took one so this i also purchased there i don't remember if i took something else from this shop i think these are the three the lang the hand dyed and the rauma finel this is what I purchased on the second uh, wool shop in Utrecht. Yeah, the third wool shop that I visited was in Amsterdam. Let me take some lemon water. Uh, the first wool shop that I visited was Stefan and Penelope in Amsterdam. I was very excited to visit. I visited there for a few times in the past, but you know, every time is uh, a new excitement. I was a little bit overwhelmed. You will see it in the video, in the Holland Adventure video. I was a little bit overwhelmed. It was it was full of hand-dyed wool. Um, unfortunately, I didn't really find uh, the colors that I was looking for. Um, I really wanted to have back with me fingering four-ply sock wool, hand-dyed sock wool. The ones that I found there was, were a little bit too expensive for me to purchase and also not really the colors that I love. Um, I really wanted to go, come back uh, with colors to fit my uh, Stella quilt blanket that I just started to work on. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't find many, uh, like a lot of colors with this color theme that I was looking for there. But I really enjoyed visiting the shop itself. The shop is really, really beautiful and it's filled with a lot of, you know, hand dyed wool. You will see the footage and the wool there uh, in the Holland video. Anyway, I did find something to go out. Uh, it, from this shop, I took these three minis from the Wok collection. I love this brand and I really, really love these three colors. So I picked up these minis. These two are the same, the same color, I think. It's a tough sock mini dream catcher this color called dream catcher let me see if it's written it's yeah it's 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent wool and then the label um hide the composition the 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 grams i think it's a yeah it's a 20 gram mini skein sock wool and this is color metal dust love these colors love them so these 
three I took with me from the Stefan and Penelope and I also took these two balls which I already uh, looking for in many other shops but uh, couldn't find them. I worked with this kind of yarn in the past. I crocheted um, a bag that I really, I think you saw here in the past already, I used a lot and I got a lot of requests to to write down the pattern for this bag, so I thought I will purchase two of these wool, um, of this wool, to two balls of this wool to, you know, if I want to knit it again while writing down the pattern. This wool is Gilead, it's a DK wool, 100% uh, wool by Diruram Natura. And this color is Pov. Hover Esel, 250 meters per 100 grams per ball. This is a DK wool and I took these two with me back from the Stefan and Penelope. So this is the purchase that I made in Stefan and Penelope. The last uh, wool shop I visited was also the nicest one. The name of the shop is Hooks and Yarns. It's not in the center of Amsterdam. It's, uh, I think, Stefan and Penelope, it's not really in the centrum of the center, but this one is also in a different area. I visited he, uh, them on the last day in our visit in Amsterdam. Mm, I don't remember the name of the area, but it's Hooks and Yarn. Also, Orna from Monday's Club recommended me to visit this shop, and it was a good recommendation. I really enjoyed it. I entered the shop, and um, it was written in Google that they will open only, I think, at 12. And when we arrived, it was a little bit earlier. So I opened the door and I asked, is it okay that I come in, even though it's not 12 yet, it was a few minutes before 12. And she said, yes, yes, I was waiting for another customer. And so I opened a little bit earlier. And there was uh, only one customer in the shop. So I said, hello. And she said, um, I said, um, I don't know how I, maybe I mentioned I came from Israel and I had a recommendation from a friend of mine uh, that, that visit here a lot because Orna visit Amsterdam a lot because her daughter lives in, uh, used to live in Amsterdam. Anyways, the lady that was in the shop said, are you from Israel? I said, yes. She said, me as well. Hello, my name is Esther. My name is Moran. How are you doing? What are you doing here? We are visiting. We are traveling. We are escaping from the horrifying days here in Israel and it was really a lovely meeting uh, and yeah and then we we were just the three of us in the shop so the shop owner Sandra she said um, uh, would you like to have some coffee and to sit and knit a little bit and I said I texted Yal I said are you okay with it he said totally okay take your time I'm here having fun the the street is really really nice and I I will go in a cafe you can have coffee there so that's what I did she made us a cup of coffee and we were sitting and chatting and you know customers were going in and out but it was all in all it was a very very lovely visit and I can't wait to visit her again in the future uh, she had a lovely collection of um, all kind of sorts of wool. I took a lot of footage for you that will also be included in the Holland video. But let me show you what I took eventually. I picked up a lot of wool, but then eventually I um, went out of the shop with these two from Regia. Also a yarn that I know and I really, really like. And again, it's classic sock wool. Regia, it's a German uh, company. 
100 grams per ball in this one, in the blue one with 420 meters. And this is a smaller ball. I think it's a 50 gram and 200. And 10 meters, it's the same kind of yarn fingering four ply sock wool. Only the difference is, you know, the, the ball size. This is 100 gram. This is 50 grams and you have 75% wool, 25% polyamide. So I took these two with me. And I also took these two. I don't know how to pronounce the name. I think J. But this is a Dutch wool. And again, it's a sock, fingering sock wool, 25% extra fine merino wool with 25% nylon. Each ball has, I think, 50 grams. Let's see. Yeah, 50 grams, 200 meters. But I completely fell in love with this lime green. And if you are not new here, this is not a surprise for you, to you. I'm a lime green person by all means. I love, love lime green. So I couldn't resist and I took these two and if you look up closely you can see that it has a little bit of orangey speckles in the wool. I hope my camera can pick it up for you so you can enjoy it. I really, really love it and yeah. And then I also took uh, Jameson's. She has she had a lot of Jameson's yarn, uh, the Shetland um, yarn. Once again, I knew I knew this brand, but I I think I purchased one ball from them back when I visited Edinburgh a few years ago. But I really really love this pale sweet pink like candy pink or I don't know how to call it but I really really love this color so I took two balls it's 25 grams per ball approximately 105 meters the name of the color is 268 dog rose this is the name of the color and this is the name of the yarn you will see the wall full of these colors in my Holland adventure video. I think I'm promoting my Holland adventure video quite a lot in this episode, which means you might check it out. You, you might want to check it out. So this is everything I purchased in our visit to Holland. A lot of it will go into the coziest memory blankets right away all of the coziest memory blankets uh, that are in the making here in the crochet object knitting studio and I, and I have one more thing to share with you before i wrap up this long video so when we arrived back home i had a lovely package waiting for me a very special and pretty gift let me show it to you. So I had this beautiful project bag, hand-stitched project bag made for me by Catherine, the lovely and talented lady from the Wool Cat. So Catherine and me, we know each other via, I think, mostly Instagram for years. We are following each other and we are uh, kind of like Instagram friends or maybe more of, more of that. But she is a friend of mine through the Instagram for years. And one day she was uploading um, a lovely picture of a project bag she was hand stitching and um, sewing for her daughter Juliette Levine I think this is the name of her daughter 
And then I said, wow, I was completely in love. And I said, wow, this is so beautiful. I wrote to her, this is so beautiful. You are so talented. Maybe there is a chance that I can purchase one bag like this from you. And she said, I will make you one and I will be in touch. And I don't know, after maybe two or three weeks later, she said, can I have your address? And I, you know, I was suspicious. I said, um, if it's this, I want to pay for it. And she, but I didn't know how to ask. I didn't know if it's polite to ask, you made the bag. And I, I didn't know what to expect, but she said, I have something to send to you. And when we came back home, I had this gorgeous hand stitch bag made by Catherine from the Woolcat uh, sent to me. So maybe let's let's make a thumbnail here with this bag. Will this be as nice as a thumbnail? Or maybe this one. Yeah. So Catherine hand stitched this lovely fabric and then she sewed this lovely bag for me and look at the fabric inside. I don't know what project will be inside, but I really want to immediately have a project, a knitting or crochet project inside. It was wrapped up in a very lovely uh, wrapping paper, but she also sent me, let me show you, a beautiful card with a beautiful letter and this tiny little envelope with a few of these bunny stitch markers. So these were also in the package from Catherine. So thank you so much, Catherine. This is, I'm so, so lucky to have this hand stitch uh, work from you. So special, such a special gift to receive. Thank you so, so much, my friend. So yeah, I think this is it. This is everything that I wanted to share with you today. I will now, um, you know, arrange the place before uh, for the neat night group they will arrive in a few hours yeah thank you so much for watching if you made it until here thank you so much for joining me thank you once again so much for all your lovely lovely notes and prayers sent our way and yeah next monday we will have the seder dinner passover next monday so this year we are going to uh, celebrate the Seder dinner with my sister's ex-husband uh, and his family. So we are very looking forward to it. It's going to be fun, I think. Uh, and yeah, um, we are going to have a little bit of a spring break here in the Crochet Objet Knitting Studio. Uh, we will meet. I will meet the Knit Night Girls this evening and then up, just after Passover we will meet again. If you celebrate Pesach, I hope you will have happy Pesach, everyone. And if not, I will see you uh, soon on the next one. I'm not sure if I will have the time to record another episode next week, but we shall see. I will record whenever I have the time and whenever I have any creative adventures uh, to share with you. Until then, happy making, everyone. Bye.